Oh, that's crooked. There we go. Hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about joy while we take a look in the Psalms to find out how to see the world just a little bit different. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about joy, which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. So what's with all this artwork? Just bringing a little nature inside. Well, I see a lot of nature here. I love how artists can look at something boring and see something amazing. Oh yeah? Like this one? It's just a big tree, but it's pretty unusual and really beautiful. Hey, what about this one right here? This right here is mostly weeds, but it almost looks alive. <laughs> That'd be a great gift for my mom. You know, I kind of wish I could see this stuff this way. You like, you know, like an artist. Actually, I think everyone can see like an artist. And that's why I've invited someone to help us. Come on in, Joe. <laughs> hey! hey! Wow. Guy's got a gallery going on in here. <laughs> hey! <laughs> We're so glad you can join us nice today. To oh, it's so good to be here. You know, I love to help people discover their artistic sides. <laughs> That's right. You're going to help us create our own paintings today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, paintings? I I've never painted anything before. Yeah, look, don't worry about it. I'll walk you through it. Y'all ready? Let's do it! I like to call this the Painted Sunset Tree Challenge. Very specific. <laughs> okay. Now, you're first going to grab your big brush out of the water jar. You're gonna have a little bit of water on the brush to help smooth out the paint as we paint. Now, what we're gonna start with is our yellow. And we're gonna paint the bottom half going left to right, a big stripe on our canvas, all right? The whole bottom half? The whole bottom half. Just go with it. It's something like this. Right now, it doesn't matter how neat it is, but you want to go all the way to the bottom. Make sure you get all the way to the edge. Okay. Oh, yours looks good. Thank you. And next, we're going to grab the orange, do the same thing, and we're going to do about a three to four inch wide stripe just above the yellow. All right, so right here, leaving room above the orange stripe for the other stripes to go in. We'll have this looks cool. <laughs> two more. Now, it's important though, if you want to go ahead and blend it real light, do a light stroke Ooh. across the yellow. Let it fade Look in. That. The lighter you touch the canvas, the better. The red color's next. We'll do the same thing with the orange. Remember, you've got two more colors to fill in above the top after this red. Great. All right, so let me guess, purple next? Purple's next. Yes. Got it. And same as before. Do about the same size stripe above the red, all the way across, leaving room for the blue to go above that. Looking great. One more time, let it lightly blend into the purple stripe below. Nice, very nice. Now for the moment, let's put away the big brush back into the water. And now we're gonna grab the medium sized brush that's sort of a square. We're gonna grab our black paint. You're gonna make a line. It's about a half inch to an inch thick. It goes right down the middle. When we get almost to the bottom, again, about a quarter way down. That's a nice tree trunk. <laughs> That's a nice tree trunk. After you get your trunk painted, we're gonna do a little bit of a squiggly line oh. and take the rest of the black Fill in as best you can. If you want to grab the big brush again, it might, might get, it'd be a good time to do that. We're going to paint in the bottom section underneath the squiggly line. 
after you get the ground or your hill colored in, we're gonna get our last brush, which should be a little thinner and more pointy. This is where your artistic side is gonna take over. You ready, Z? Uh, we'll see. You're gonna create your own branches that come off of your tree trunk at the top. And however you feel that this tree wants to grow up into the space, you put those branches on there as you see fit. And they get even thinner the further away from the tree that you go. That looks amazing. What's wrong, Z? Oh, uh, I'm just not sure it looks right. Hey, you got this, okay? Just be creative. Think about that big old giant tree in your backyard. Uh, right. <sighs> Feel free to add in little touches of leaves onto these branches. So little dots. You can use the black if you want or experiment and try some of the other colors that are on your palette. Joe, yours looks amazing. Oh, oh wow. thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yeah, I'm loving it. So you can do as much or as little as you want. You want to make this your own. These are just the basic steps to making this uh, painted sunset tree challenge. Let's see how you guys did. You ready? Oh, yeah, OK. Three, two, one. one. Oh, <laughs> Carter, that's awesome. Thank you. Look at yours. Yours looks amazing. <laughs> wow, you guys did a great job, especially for your first time out. These look excellent. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know what, Joe? Thank you so much for coming here today and helping us out. We really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Hey, I'll see you guys around. I'll see you. Just think about it. One tree, three completely different perspectives. I'm going to look at trees in a whole new way now. Speaking of which, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Psalms. Long before there were high-tech lyric and dance videos for worship, there were the Psalms. For thousands of years, the Psalms were the main songbook of God's people, the Israelites. The individual songs, or Psalms, were composed over many years. About half of them were written by King David. Some psalms are songs of praise or thanksgiving to God. Others share wisdom, and many are cries for help in a tough situation. The psalms speak truth about who we are, who God is, and the incredible world that God created. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, everyone. I'm Brian. We all have days and times when joy seems very far away and very hard to find. But sometimes the best way to discover joy is simply to open your eyes and look around. King David was really good at this. Long before David became king, he was just a shepherd boy. He spent many days and nights alone with only the sheep, and he had all the time in the world to look around him at God's amazing creation. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in the whole earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. David was overwhelmed by the beauty of what God had created from the tiniest beetle on a blade of grass to vast galaxies spanning the night sky. I think about the heavens. I think about what your fingers have created. I think about the moon and stars that you have set in place. David poured out his heart about these incredible things in songs called Psalms. And today we're taking a look at three of them, Psalms 8, 16, and 19. The heavens tell about the glory of God. The skies show that his hands created them. Day after day they speak about it. Night after night they make it known. God has set up a tent in the heavens for the sun. The sun is like a great runner who takes delight in running a race. David learned to find joy in all of God's creation around him. And you can do that too. Even if you live in a city instead of the wilderness, maybe you've seen a flower growing out of a crack in the sidewalk or smiled when you spotted a curious bird pecking at crumbs. One of the best ways to find joy around you is to just use your senses. They're an amazing gift from God. Maybe not every one of your five senses works great, but that doesn't have to stop you from finding joy. Let's start with the easy one. Sight. If you're feeling bored or sad or frustrated, 
Step outside or look out the window. You might see blue sky that seems to go on forever. Giant puffy clouds, a million green leaves, plucky dandelions poking through cracked pavement, funky looking stones or gravel glittering with fool's gold. <laughs> There's no end of the beautiful and fascinating things God made for us to enjoy. Now let's move on from eyes to ears. You can find joy in what you hear too. A restless breeze, the patter of raindrops, bird calls, or one of God's most incredible inventions, music. You can also find joy in what you <laughs> smell. Though, let's be real, smells are not always delightful. <laughs> no, I'm talking about those awesome scents that can change your mood in a heartbeat. Grandma's cinnamon rolls, mm. the tangy smell of a Christmas tree, wood smoke on crisp fall air, salty sea spray at the ocean, fresh cut grass. Now don't you wish this was smell-o-vision? Every single one of those scents and thousands more can bring you joy. And let's not forget our fourth sense, touch. A silky wriggly puppy, sand squishing between your toes, a cozy weighted blanket. And last but not least, taste. A perfectly juicy orange, melt in your mouth chocolate, cold, cold water on a hot day. God has given us countless ways to discover joy through our senses. But as David wrote, we can also find joy when we pay attention to the unique and wonderful people God made. What are human beings that you think about them? What is a son of man that you take care of them? You have made them a little lower than the angels. You placed on them a crown of glory and honor. You made human beings rule over everything your hands created. King David found joy and wonder in the people around him. He was just in awe of the way that God made us each unique and gave us the work of caring for all God made. So when you need a moment of joy, look at the people around you your baby sister's laughter, how the library lady smiles when she hands over your books, the way your teacher makes big gestures when he gets excited to help you learn something new. Like David, we can practice paying attention to the world around us, to all the amazing things and people that God created. And when we do that, we start to see that even though life isn't always easy, God is still at work. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. So my heart is glad. Joy is on my tongue. You always show me the path of life. You will fill me with joy when I am with you. When you look around and use your senses to explore everything God created, you'll discover there's always joy to be found. The end. I want to get out there and go for a hike right now. Or sit on the porch with some ice cold sweet tea and watch the birds. I thought bird watching was for old people. Well, I'm reclaiming it for our generation. Hey, I'm down with birds. So, what's our part in the story? No matter what else is happening in your life, there is always joy to be found. Just by looking around and really paying attention. Using your five senses. That's one way. One of my teachers had us do this thing if we were worried or stressed. She had us take a deep breath and look around and name five things that we could see, four things that we could hear, three things that we could smell, two things that we could touch, and one thing that we could taste. That's really awesome. If you're feeling stuck, you can always take a look at uh, one of the Psalms too, as a reminder that God can work good in any situation. Yeah, um, uh, what was it? If you will fill me with joy when I am with you. When we follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to guide us. Joy is a gift from the Spirit. And paying attention to what's around you is a great way to receive that gift. I think you got it. Is that chocolate chip cookies? See you next time. So, here's the thing. Find joy in what you see around you. Well, I'm ready to see the great outdoors. You up for a spot of bird watching? You know, I think I am. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. All right, you ready? Whoa, why are you so small? Come back. You know that's the wrong side? Oh, hark. Do I hear the dulcet tones of a tropical boo-boo? A what? It's a real bird. Look it up. Maybe you can paint it.
A tropical boo-boo. I've never heard that before. It's a real bird. Uh,